entire biological family and myself. By stating such a classification, the problem of security and surveillance is just mushroom. This would not tend to be an easy answer for the powers in which we are, if indeed that was the motive intended. Unfortunately, the more you read, the more you will understand that such an easy answer under any form of rationalization could not possibly be true. The next six or seven months involved numerous incidents of harassment by the North Vancouver RCMP, while at the same time, when they had a legitimate excuse to harass me, it seemed more like I was receiving breaks or some form of leniency or protection. On one occasion, my youngest adopted brother had got himself involved with a rough crowd. A traffic officer, for some perceived traffic infraction, consequently stopped me and he supposedly gave me a break. No ticket. He then asked me to attend the local detachment and speak with a certain sergeant. This meeting was supposed to pertain to driving infractions. When I arrived, the officer sat me down in an interview room and then dropped the bombshell. He asked me if I would inform on my brother's alleged activities. I was promised payment in any form I wished as long as it was in cash form. As well, they said I would actually be helping my brother. They would drop any and all future possible charges against them. I then asked that they would notarize this offer through a lawyer. Needless to say, they bluntly refused. At that point, I angrily left the detachment. From that point on, any traffic officer who happened to come across me harassed. I was given roadside vehicle inspections, a tail light deliberately broken by one officer. My insurance was always being validated. I began to get very angry and tried to bring formal charges of harassment against the police department. When I attended the front desk of police headquarters and requested how to file a formal statement of harassment, I was given a statement form to complete. I completed it, complied, and turned it in. I was then asked to stay so that the watch commander could speak to me. I was invited into the captain's office along with the sergeant, and at that point I heard the officer who had detained me. I'm sorry. I was invited into the captain's office along with the sergeant who escorted me in. As soon as the door closed, so did their demeanor change. The captain looked at me and asked if I knew who would be reviewing this complaint. I told him, you, probably, and then asked why, and he told me that I had been correct in my assumption. Exactly where do you think I will file this, he asked me, indicating where, by shifting his eyes towards the garbage can. Probably right there, pointing at the can beside the desk. He agreed with my assumption, and he tore up my written complaint and deposited the remaining pieces in the container. As I rose in order to leave, the sergeant spoke up. You think this is harassment? We can really harass you if you'd like. He remarked, leaving the statement open-ended as in the form of a threat. Like most government agencies, the police police themselves, whereby leaving little options for those wishing for justice. I had just received my true lesson in life and politics. The true way of the world is dog eat dog, so that those at the bottom might stay there and at least won't fight back. This is not the way it was meant to be, but it is the way that our human society has evolved through the ages. Do not be afraid, but rather look around you and truly understand, because this, my friends, was only my introduction into the real world. Now, here's the flip side as to what had been occurring during this time frame. One evening, while driving home from a military party at a local armory, HMCS Discovery, I'd just been promoted to the rank of leading seaman, which would be a corporal, a uh, non-commissioned uh, officer. Being more than a little intoxicated, I could have easily been arrested in my vehicle income. However, when I was pulled over on Lonsdale Avenue in North Vancouver, this did not happen. The officer only asked me where I was heading. When I gave the address of my parents' home, he escorted me there. As a student in criminology, I now realize the officer had made a grave error in the use of his own discretion. For some reason, maybe one not of his own choosing. By allowing me to retain care and control of my vehicle, he allowed himself to be open to some serious lawsuits or worse if an accident had occurred while following him. That evening when I walked into my... Well, I'm going to stop there and uh, move on.